Welcome to Biomedical Engineers TV. We have covered almost all parameters in our last two videos. Today in this last video of Patient Monitoring Series, we will know about monitoring interface parameters, which can be monitored through other devices on the patient monitor. Let's begin with TOF, or also known NST monitors. In anesthesia, neuromolecular blocking agents may be required to facilitate endotracheal intubation and provide optimal surgical conditions. When neuromolecular blocking agents are administered, neuromuscular function of the patient must be monitored. Neuromuscular function monitoring is a technique that involves the electrical stimulation of a motor nerve and monitoring the response of the muscle supplied by that nerve. When trainer form monitoring is used continuously, each set of stimuli normally is repeated every 10th to 12th second. Each stimulus in the train causes the muscle to contract and fade, In the response provides the basis for, for evaluation. These sets are called trains because their shape bears the resemblance of a train. In train of four monitoring, peripheral nerve simulation can ensure proper medication dosing, thus decrease the incidence of side effects by assessing the depth of neuromuscular blockade. The ECG outslash marker in interface receives the ECG waveform directly from the ECG RESP Arrhythmia ST segment physiological algorithm via an RS422 serial interface and converts the digital ECG signal to an analog ECG signal. In addition, the ECG out controller receives from a connected device the marker information and forwards the data to the ECG RESP Arrhythmia ST segment physiological algorithm. The converted analog signal is used to synchronize a connected device to the patient's ECG. The interaoric balloon pump, IABP, is a type of therapeutic device. It helps your heart pump more blood. You may need it if your heart is unable to pump enough blood for your body. The IABP consists of a thin flexible tube called a catheter. Attached to the tip of the catheter is a long balloon. This is called an intraaortic balloon or IAB. The other end of the catheter attaches to a computer console. The console has a mechanism for inflating and deflating the balloon at a proper time when your heart beats. This IABP monitor is connected through the ECG out interface to the patient monitor and get the signals from the monitor like arrhythmia signals, respiration signals. Let's move on to the AGM gas module. Anesthetic gas module, AGM, uses infrared absorption technology to identify and measure the five most commonly used anesthetic gases, as well as N2O and CO2. A paramagnetic technique measures oxygen. The AGM can detect and alert the presence of an anesthetic agent mixture. In addition, the AGM calculates MAC and MAC, awakes values for display on patient monitors. The AGM automatically identifies the anesthetic agents. The identified predominant agent is measured along with O2, N2O, and CO2. The real-time CO2 waveform provides an immediate indication of proper endotracheal tube placement during intubation. The next interface parameter is ICP monitor interface. Intracranial pressure ICP monitoring is a diagnostic test that helps doctors determine if high or low cerebrospinal fluid, CSF pressure, is causing your symptoms. The test measures the pressure in your head directly using a small pressure-sensitive probe that is inserted through your skull. Whilst ICP monitoring is most commonly used for the management of severe head trauma, its use also extends to CSF, circulatory disorders and can be either diagnostic or therapeutic. The three main types of IC monitor are the external ventricular drain, EVD, the subarachnoid bolt, and the epidural bolt. These techniques are used to monitor ICP reading on patient monitor. The next feature of higher patient monitor 
is drug dose calculations. Most of the higher-end patient monitor consists of this feature, where anesthetic can calculate different doses of drug and store patient monitors, which can be used during operation and during recovery of patients. That's the end of patient monitoring parameter definition series videos. Hope you liked the way I kept the video to understand the physiological parameter definitions in a simple manner. All the parameters are very deep in knowledge to understand they have all complicated physiological engineering measurement techniques to learn. I hope we can discuss individual parameters in details and application of the same in future videos. In the next video, we will learn about defibrillators. Till then, subscribe to the channel and keep watching Biomedical Engineers TV.